Well, Elizabeth, is it like um, it's like coming home? Deja vu. Is it? <laughs> God, yeah. Take this closer to your face. This? Yeah, pretend it's James' member. Not that close. Right. Yeah, so Elizabeth is back on to do a podcast because the last time you were on, loads of people <laughs> wanted to know more stuff. Right. And you, this is a different podcast room. Yes. This is in a convent where you went to school here. Mm, for five years. And you were actually in this room. Yeah. Before it was done. Yeah. What the was it? It was the library. <laughs> and you were in here reading. We were doing everything. There was a class in it as well. We used to do classes. With the nuns? Not with the nuns. The lay teachers. What's a lay teacher? They were nuns. <laughs> oh, and that's Just what they call them. Just ordinary people, yeah. Yeah. And were they nicer than the nuns? I know, they were all okay. You know, I think it's your frame of mind when you're there yourself. It's not the teachers. <laughs> Did you hate this? Did I hate the school? Mm. I know, I just didn't like school, you know. But you're like it now, don't you? It's lovely here. <laughs> How come you, you took you, you, so long to get you back on? Are you that busy? I don't think so. Should you ask me a couple of times? <laughs> a couple of times is a couple of times more than I should have to ask you. Do you know, like uh, loads of people wanted you to come on. I was like, Elizabeth, you may come on, uh, do another podcast. People want to know some stuff. And you're there, yeah, 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 can't. <laughs> can't, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Well, I think I was going somewhere last night. Wasn't I in Dublin or something? You were going to something for Tanya. Tanya's birthday. Imagine, Elizabeth and James <laughs> went to Temple Bar <laughs> on Tanya's birthday doing shots. We did, yeah. Off <laughs> strippers' backs. Was it something like that, wasn't it? Oh, God, no. What did you do? <laughs> I can't remember now. <laughs> Offhand, I can't remember, but we had a nice night. Well, tell me, what's been going on since the last time you were on? Well, I've been very busy. Have you? Oh, God, David, you have no idea. <laughs> Has that got to do with the podcast? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I have to say that the people that follow you are just such lovely people. Sure, I know, like. Really, really nice people. You know? Yeah, it was weird when he stands up taking yeah. pictures. <laughs> <laughs> During the episodes, Matt gets up and takes a few pictures and some people go, what the and fuck is going on? <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so my followers are the best there is, is it? Is that what you're saying? Well, I have to say that there's not one person that I could say that I have anything negative to say about. They were lovely. They're all lovely. Go on. What are they saying about me? Oh, should they all love you? Go on. What did they say? <laughs> Go on. They do, though. I don't really want to know. It's just for everyone at home. What did they want? What did they say? Well, the normal thing that people would say is, be like David Cuddy. Be fucking real. <laughs> Flirting. <laughs> just be real. I have a new t-shirt you know? coming out. Oh, right? have you? New, yeah, yeah. What's on it's it? called I Still Live in the Real World. Well, yeah. And do I you, think that's why people like you, because you do live in the real world. But enough about me. <laughs> um, apart from all that, do you think since in the last year, isn't there a weird old vibe? Oh, last year was a hard year. Yeah, but everywhere, even on the news. And yeah, yeah. Well, you see, last year, I know now I'm going on about Feng Shui, but last year was the tiger year. It was never going to be a nice year anywhere on the globe, you know? So, but the only thing is gone now, right? So you but, think it's all up and up? No, no. Well, it's gone the tiger year, but we're still in the tiger month in the rabbit year. So the tiger is still around until the 5th of March. See, I still don't understand any of this <laughs> stuff, right? But it's energy. I'm, I'm just going to tell you what it's like having <laughs> Elizabeth as a sister, right? <laughs> so in the middle of my day where I'm trying to just, uh, you know, get kids up, Lily wasn't well, all these sort of things, right? And you sent me this today. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just read it out. So you sent me a chart first mm. that in my head was indecipherable. <laughs> it says under it, Kua 2. Gua 2. Gua 2, <laughs> right? And then the text underneath is, David, your best direction for power, authority and respect <laughs> is Northeast. As in... <laughs> Doing business on the phone, computer, etc. Sit at a desk looking into the northeast and use northeast room. Your head while sleeping. The crown of your head should be one of the good directions. Four good directions. Four to avoid. You should just check, David. You are the grand duke this year. You are the boss. You are the grand duke. And I message, are you on drugs? I didn't get that. Did I? <laughs> and then I said, get James to drop you in 6.30. We'll chat oh, about that. I got that. So, I had someone today, you see, so I had to, you know, 
cut out. <laughs> you had someone? I had a person today, yeah. Early? Um, two o'clock. Even on a Sunday? Yeah, I took someone today. Yeah. I do if I have to. If someone... An emergency? Well, yeah. If someone is um, can't do it during the week, I will accommodate. What's an emergency? Oh, it could be something now, you know. <laughs> you know, the usual stuff. No, tell me. <laughs> For someone that isn't in. So, hey, right. For someone that didn't listen to the last right. podcast, mm. what is it that you do? Okay. Well, um, what I do is, well, I won't really call it spiritual response therapy. I do it my own way, right? I use a pendulum and a set of charts, right? And I tap into, I suppose people people have a way of um, of making their own mind up about the Godhead or whatever, right? So some people think the Godhead is Buddha. There's some, you know, they think it's different types of, I suppose, religions or whatever, right? But what I do is I just go to the top, literally to the Godhead. Irrelevant who it is. Well, to me, it's God, right? So if anybody else doesn't believe in God, it's whatever they believe in. But most people believe in a higher power. What if if it's someone that believes in the Yankee dollar? (laughs) Well, sure, we'll tap into the Yankee dollar then. (laughs) (laughs) If you can figure out how to tap into the Yankee dollar, you've got something going. Well... No, I just, um, what I do then is um, I tap into the Godhead and then I'm working with the person before me, right? And they tell me what's going on in their lives and what's wrong in their lives, I suppose. Like take, for instance, now I had a girl today and she had spirits in her house, right? And that was the main reason why she was on to me today, right? And was the first time you were talking to her today? Yeah, it's the first time I ever met her. So she rings you and says, what? She wants clearing. She heard about me from someone else or she saw the podcast. But, but she doesn't give you an explanation of what happened. No, I don't have to know. And some people think they have to talk to the spirit and tell it to go like, you know. But what I do is I tap into the Godhead. I get my protection around me, which is my spiritual committee. Right. I know it's hard to explain. Right. But what I do is I tap into the Godhead first through my committee. So I have a guardian angel. So have you. So have you. Right. But we also have a high self committee, which is two other beings. They're not angels. They come from the Godhead to mind your soul, literally to look after you. Now, when I heard this first, I was there, uh, I don't know. But the more I did it, the more I see it. it you do see the people, these people that are your committee. I never saw my committee, but I know they're there. Right. So when I pick up my pendulum, right. The minute I ask a question. For anyone right? that's watching on YouTube, she has a pendulum out yeah. now. Now, say I just give the pendulum room to move, right? So it's just hanging there. But I'm not asking a question, right? So nothing's happening. It's just hanging there, right? So I have a guardian angel that protects me, end of. But I also have two other beings that are called my spiritual committee. I call them high self. And when I say high self, is my name Elizabeth? Yes. Is my name Mark? No. Show me this, the clearing symbol and it'll just spin. And then if I ask nothing, nothing happens. Right? Now, I have a contract with my high self set up since, um, what is it, um, 2009 when I started SRT. How do you set up a contract? I ask, I just set up a contract. And that's why I'm saying to you, what do you want? Tell your committee what you want. <laughs> right? And they, you set up contract with them and say, right, lads, this is what I'm looking for. Get up there, find out what I need, get the information, assimilate it, get back down here and make it workable for me. So right? are you saying that you're not making any of your decisions? No, no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that what you want, right? What do you want? You want things to go well. Yeah. You want to be happy. You want to be healthy. You want more than money. You want a balance of everything. Hmm. Right. So if you want a balance of everything, you have to say to yourself, right, um, what do I really want? So you have your lovely family, you have your kids, you have a lot of great things in your life. So what I say is I find out how many are on your committee. Right. So I say, hi, self, how many souls are on David's committee? And they will tell me one guardian angel, two high self committee members. Right. But sometimes there can be three high self committee members. And if there is, it's conflicting information. So, so one, of them, many. one of them shouldn't be there. One of them shouldn't be there. So we ask spirit. And that's people that are really, really confused. They can be, you know, they just don't know what to do. They're confused with life and things aren't going well. So what we do is I say, 
reduce the link. In so the where did this other person chain. come from? This other... It's just another being that shouldn't be there. Are they ghosts? Right. I don't think they're ghosts, no. They're spiritual beings, right? So if you can think, right, um, just say you were in Mammy's belly as a fetus. Yeah. Right? So Mammy and Daddy got together and created you. Yeah. Right? Got well, busy. Your soul was up in heaven, we'll say. It's called the Bardo, Bardo, right? But your soul was up there and it had come from another body, from another lifetime. Right. And it's up there. And God says, you have to go back. You didn't learn your lesson. You pick your parents. So you get to pick your parents. You get to pick your parents, the soul, and it gets to pick what it wants to go through in this lifetime. So what religious doctrine is that from originally? Well, SRT is really very biblical. Like if you were to look at my charts, most of them, the 12 apostles in one. Right. And they go on about certain things in the Bible. Like it is. He he was a minister. Robert Dexler, he was a minister and he used to do response therapy. That's what he called it. But um, what happened was um, he started ask, asking questions with a pendulum and then he realized, oh, I can ask about spiritual stuff. Right. So then he started getting downloads like I get downloads. Right. You know, I can be told what's going on with you by through the charts. But where did, when did the significance of a pendulum come in? Because he did response therapy and he was doing it with a pendulum. He was asking the questions with a pendulum. So like I said there now, you know, um, to tell me, you know, is my name this? Yes or no. The, the pendulum is answering the questions, but it's through the spiritual committee is literally pushing my hand through and some kind of electric magnetic thing. Right. But they're they're pushing the pendulum. And I'm not. So do you know when the pendulum just moves on its own? Do you know when Normal Joe is just doing yeah. his day and yeah. something comes to your head? Yeah. Oh, I never done this. Are you saying is that your committee? Yeah. So the your your the conversations you have with yourself in your consciousness is can be yes. Now sometimes we have that negative monkey in our head, right? But when you get a good feeling about something and you know you get an idea about something, just say you're going to sell a product, mm. right? And you start inquiring about it. That is your committee downloading information into your right brain. Your right brain is your intuitive brain and your left brain is your learned brain. So right and left hemisphere of the brain, right? They're supposed to come together to work, I suppose, in a better way for you, right? So if you go with your gut more than you go with the analytical side, an awful lot of doctors are analytical. Right. They just know what they see on the piece of paper and they have to do things a certain way. But if someone has a problem with their liver, right, there's a problem with the liver, but there is an emotional problem behind what's causing that problem in the liver. OK. And it's normally resentment, anger, and the liver is all about processing what's going on in your head. You're processing what's going on in your life. You're try if you wake at liver time, which is one to three. If you're awake, even subconsciously, you're replaying your day. You're trying to process who said this to you and who said that to you and what's going on and what do I have to do and all that kind of thing. Is that like overthinking? Overthinking, yeah. So do, yeah. does everyone overthink too much? Most people do, yeah. I think everyone does. I think it's normal. Do you know what I mean? But some people overthink so much and they have so much anger and resentment in them. Then the liver starts to kick. Where does most of this anger and resentment come from? Stuff that happened in life. And just not dealing with it. Yeah. They kind of just place it there and get on with life. But it's still there. The memory is in the cellular memory of the liver, basically. It's gone into the cells. You know, I know it's, I know now, to me, it's simple, right? I understand. But I know for just people that haven't been doing what I'm doing, I understand that if someone says to me, oh my God, I have so many kidney infections. It's fear. So what makes you, what? Makes you perv on my committee. <laughs> so, well, you know what I mean? So when, when you messaged me today, how come I, my things came up in your head? Well, I want you to do the best you can do this year for yourself. I want you to be successful. And I know you will be, right? But it's if great you, that you think that. <laughs> yeah, no. But if you're not sleeping in your good direction, right, you're going to be compromised. So you are a Gua too. Now, Tanya's a Gua too as well. Gua twos are very intuitive. Right? They're very intuitive people. So there's other guas. There's a gua one to gua nine. 
right? You're a GWA2. I'm a GWA6. What's right? the difference between GWA2 and They're GWA6? They're different personality profiles, right? So you're a sin metal. So you're a, gua, you're a sin metal rabbit. Right? You say that. I, I don't know what, what that you means. Are, right? You are born the day of the rabbit. This is the year of the rabbit. Why couldn't I be something cool like a fucking so, lion? No. Well, um, <laughs> you're the monkey. <laughs> monkey, Brilliant. goat, rabbit. Right? So you're the monkey, the year of the monkey, the month of the goat, and you are the day of the rabbit. And it's the rabbit year. So you are the Grand Duke this year. You are the boss. What does the Grand Duke mean? The Grand Duke was the tiger last year. It is the boss. It, it rules all 12 animals, basically. It's the animal that's in control. Also, I'm the boss. You are in control this year. I hope everyone's year. listening to but this But that's now. why I'm looking. That's why I said it to you. You know, so if you use your good direction, so just say you're in, I don't know what direction the other one was, right? But if you're in one of the bad directions, you're going to be compromised. So you might as well use your good direction. So if someone contacts me and their child, say, is wet in the bed at night, right? Or the child is um, unsettled, right? I do the clearing. Right, whatever needs to be done. If there is anything going on, it doesn't necessarily have to be a spirit, right? It can be just that they're in bad form and we clear whatever needs to be cleared. So right? from A to B, any problem someone rings you with yeah. and you take their what? You, you, what information do you get from them to figure out what right. could be wrong? Yeah, well, what I do first, just say, um, just say a random person comes in then and they're after being in hospital and they're not well. Right. They come home from hospital and they hear about me and I say, OK, now I'm not an expert in Feng Shui by any means. Right. I just go into the little Bazi chart that anybody can go into. Right. It's the Joey Yap Bazi chart. And I put in their date of birth, the day they're born, just their date of birth. Right. And then it will come up that you're born. You're a Gua 2 or Gua 1 to Gua 9. Right. So that, first of all, tells me the type of personality you are. Right. And, and is that the, always right? Yes, it's always. I'm telling you now, right? Now, when I was doing clearance before... Has I it never been wrong? It's never wrong. Really? It is, it is never wrong. You are who you are. Your animals will always be the same. So the year you were born, the monkey was on the throne. So is that any different than Pisces, Aries? Not it's something like that. It's just that it's the, it's the Feng Shui Zodiac, right? So you look at Mars, right? It's mm. a planet. They called it Mars. Yeah. Right. Well, in the Chinese zodiac, there is 12 animals, there are 12 stars and they're just called after an animal. And they didn't have a farm animal vicious enough to call it a tiger. So they had to call it a tiger. So the tiger is one of the most vicious ones. So it causes disruption. And we had that last year. And in the tiger month, which is February, the war started. Right. So you can see a pattern and you can see a pattern in people's lives. So I can see stuff coming down the road. Oh, fuck, what's coming? With people. No, but you can see good things no, coming too. No, come on, tell me. <laughs> I, I need to know. There's absolutely nothing, you know. But it's just that I know that you're coming into a better time. Do you ever see horrific things coming? Um, For anyone? Not horrific things. You just see by the chart that, oh, it's not good. I'm not going to say to someone, oh, you're going to have a swimmingly great time when they're not in a great time. But right? have you ever seen someone and said, and something told you, oh no, shit's going to go down. And what? then it went down. Yeah, you know, you you know, um, it's not that you'd say shit's going to come down, right? But you'd say, okay, that's, it's like um, mammy last year, right? I could see the clash. Daddy was the clash. Daddy had a clash, but that clash was going to affect all of us. And you could tell that? Yeah. So we talked about it before he passed. We talked about it like, you know, so you can actually see, yeah, you can see it. You can, see, like, I don't know, I'm not going to go around telling everyone, oh God, you have a terrible year. But your feng shui is 33 and a third percent of your life. Your feng shui, your animals are 33 and a third percent. So all I do is I go into the Bazi chart, right? And I see, right, his gua to his sin metal, the jewelry of life, has to be seen. <laughs> right? Do you know what I mean? Like the sin metal are jewelry. So they shine and they're, they're seen. Right? They sparkle. But do you see him sparkling or does everyone else? It's just the type of person you are. You can, know? can you see different types of people from just looking at them? Yeah. I, sometimes I'd say to James, there's a gung metal if I ever saw one. Right? Tough. Out. Right? Real tough people. You know, not necessarily bad people, but tough in comparison to what you'd be. You're soft. Right? Fuck you, Liz. Well, you are, Dave. You no, are. I'm not on tough as fucking nails. Sim metal people are, are pretty as well. <laughs> They're good looking mean? people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Good looking people, again. yeah. You know. Sisters, but like cool. I I all I do is I look at the chart and I say, Okay, 
you know, like you now, you have the rabbit, right? So last year, anyone that had the monkey and the snake, particularly, the rooster didn't have an easy time either, right? But they're just animals. They're called the star. It's the star that's the, the problem that has the clash like. So this year, it's a rabbit. So this year, what does the rabbit do best? Fuck. Well, they mate, I was going to say, right? <laughs> but that's what they do. So this year is going you know to be kind of... they eat their own shit as well? I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh? Everyone thinks rabbits are cute, but they have really bad digestion. So they keep eating their own shit. So <laughs> well, they eat the grass and stuff, then they eat their own shit, and they keep eating it and eating it until they have the food got over it. And that no can, way. Yeah. That re- can, eat, reusing it like... Yeah, re-eating their shit. Disgusting. Yeah. Well, I'm the hour of the rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> so I am. So I'm the Grand Duke as well, David. <laughs> well, we were born the same month. Anyone that has the rabbit in their chart is so, the Grand Duke this year. Tell me this. <laughs> uh, so when you're talking to all these different people and nobody's messaging you or ringing you or meeting you unless they have a problem, mm. Mm. are most of the problems or what percentage is ghouls and ghosts? Not a huge percentage. You know, do you I have would, weird dreams? Sometimes. Is it because of all that? No, um, I've noticed now, we've only gone into the rabbit here in the last, say, week and a half, right? And I found that because I have the rabbit in my chart, there's a, I can feel the energy. It's more of a, it's like there's an aggressive energy coming at me. The, the rabbit's kind of pumped up this year, right? They're, they're pumped up with extra energy, right? And I'm starting to feel that. Like in a negative way? No, in a, in a good way. I, but you have to channel that energy some way. How right? do you channel it? Um, I'm going to have to start walking <laughs> or doing something because I can feel it. Even James will tell you now. I'm not just saying it to you. Oh, oh, I didn't, I know. What? I don't, what? <laughs> don't be fucking telling me. I don't know what he's doing to my no, sister. No, but I, was, I even said to him today, God, I feel like I just need to run or something. You know, I feel I have extra energy than I usually have. Where normally I'd be a bit tired, you know. I feel I have extra energy, but I know it's the energy. It's, yeah. People don't realize there is an invisible energy out there. When you're, when you're cold and the weather's out there, you pawn a coat. Mm. You understand the cold. You understand the weather. But there is actually um, an invisible prevailing energy out there that is feng shui, right? Now, I don't make a huge big deal out of it. It's just that it gives me an idea of a person's personality if I go into the chart. I know they're either a Gua 1 or a Gua 2, right? Or what, and they're sin metal. You were born the day that metal was, every day is ruled by an element. And you were born on a sin metal day. Not yang metal, yin metal. Right? Yeah. Martine is the sun. But She's sun. But you get to the, the masses, they don't understand that. They just want to know how it works. Or what it, what, what it does for them when they come to see you. Right. Well, what I, what, what I do is, right, as I tell them, right, this is who you are. Right. These are your animals. Right. And this year you're either going to be clashed or you're not or you're going into a better time. And we can by talking about them, we're, by talking about their animal signs, we can say, oh, that year you started a new 12 year cycle and they can start to see the pattern of big things changed that year, 12 years ago. Right. Or they got a divorce or, you know, certain things would have happened on a particular year. It could have been the rabbit year in 12 years ago. like. You know? would, would it be younger people or older people? Come I to have see you? every, every age. Would it be mostly women or men? Both. What is the most common problem in, say, younger females? Well, anxiety is a huge problem now. For From people. what? You see, <laughs> and this is again now, you know, anyone born, say, um, someone born in 1997, 1998, 1987, right? They have 1987 or 19 whatever, right? Well, when you have, um, although those numbers are strong numbers, mm. right? So when a child is born in 2000, like Emma now, my daughter, right? So she was born 2000, right? So any children from 2000, they're millennium children, but they don't have that strong sequence of numbers in their charts. They're all zeros. So what does that mean? Zero means heavenly help, heavenly help, heavenly help. Right? So they're, they're just, they're more, they're very, very sensitive children. So any children born 2000 on, now it's starting to come to two, two, 2023. So the numbers are coming up again. 
right? So any kids that are born with, the, the, the emotional line is basically missing on their chart. So an awful lot of them are very anxious, very sensitive, but very spiritual. But what, why? What, what's making them like that? It's, it's just the numbers. You see, numerology means something. It's energy. I know, but how does that transpire in their real life? What issues is that causing them in their real life? Anxiety. They're sensitive, right? So say a child born in 1994 will not be as inclined to be as sensitive as a child born in 2000. They say, oh, they're millennium, they're millennium children, but they're a different breed. They just are more sensitive. Now, this is my experience, mm. right, of it. They are more sensitive. And what's wrong with lads? Um, it can be anything. You know, like it's just, it can be anything. No two people are the same, you know. But when I'm talking to people yeah, and when people are messaging me, because you know a lot of people mm. message me mm. and I see the same issues all the time. Yeah. Now, a lot of people are, now there is a lot of suicide suicidal thoughts out there, you know, of thinking they can't and won't be able to cope in life, you know. But to me, um, a pro suicide is a program, right? And the soul makes a decision that it wants to go at a certain time when it comes in, even before it comes in. Before it's born. Even before it's born. Because it could have, it could have went through suicide in different... So um, that, that means... So what you're saying is that's back to, I remember saying this to you last time. Mm. Are you saying that our fates are predetermined from our birth? I think our, I think what happens is the soul, right? The soul is a spiritual being. We're just humans and the spiritual being is within our bodies, mm. right? So the soul comes in to have a human experience. And it nearly literally knows what it wants to go through and the experience it wants to go through. And like, it's even predetermined, like but you were meeting Vicky's soul and your children, ye are the portal to your children, like. Do you know what I mean? Your children come through ye. But does your own resilience and how you handle them situations dictate how you proceed through life? Oh, like goodness. I have, I have this, uh, I have a problem with fate being determined. Mm. In my, in my yeah. head, in my head. I feel that if you, you, you can change your fate because all it, it's just making decisions one, from one minute to like, we're all psychopaths and we're all the nicest people in the world. Just sitting here with just by a decision. Yeah. Like I could get up and murder you, or murder you right now. But I don't, mm. but we all could. So I, 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 it's just what, what's, so I, I have a problem with, it can't be fate is determined. Or maybe well, that's what I'm trying to figure out, like. Yeah. Well, what I feel, like I know in past lives, I was probably a psychopath, right? I, I was so many different things in the past life. But do you think you're so a psychopath now? types of people. But people might think I am with what I do, right? Because I could never, I could never actually really tell people what I do. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because they would have thought, oh, she's a bit for the birds, like, you know. But I always knew, even when I was walking these, do these corridors here when I was young, I always knew there was something. Like something else? Yeah, there was something else. Even passing by the, I'd always be aware of certain rooms, knowing there was certain energy there. Oh yeah, like, so did you, you thought you were haunted? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know I was haunted, right? But I know now that I can... Control it. I can control that, yeah. But I do know that our souls have been through so many different past lives. Right. And we have been everything. We have been bad. We have been good. We can come up to the animal kingdom. Do you know what I mean? They call it the 2600 pathways. Do you ever get confused about whether we're good or bad? I think there's an aspect of bad in us all. Oh, fuck yeah. I do. I like, think. If, yeah. if you look at any of the zombie programs, like you're watching The Last of Us. I didn't see it. No, no. Like, I'm watching that and it's like in The Last of Us and in The Walking Dead. The worst aspects of those programs are always the other humans. It's never the zombies. I know. Yeah. And people yeah. do horrible things because people would do horrible things. Mm. And it's like when you read any of the books on the Holocaust and Nazi Germany and the SS and you think, oh, I'd never do that. that we, w we would all be them Nazis. If you're, it's such a few amount of people would go, no, kill me, kill my family. I'd never do that. 
people do what they can to survive. Oh, yeah. Your survival instinct mm. will kick in. Mother will, yeah. And it's, you know, little things bit by bit. Like, did you ever, there's a book called Ordinary Men and it shows how normal, everyday doctors, um, you know, shoekeepers, shopkeepers, farmers ended up murdering m pregnant women and children in, in masses. It just, little by little, because the whole group is doing it. And if you didn't do it, you'd be killed. Yeah. Mm. And that kind of thing scares me because like, we, we, we all have it in us to be good yeah. or bad. That's why I think like, it's, it's decisions. It's easy, say, take a moral high ground when everything's going well for you. Mm. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. No, I think there's a bad, there's a bad aspect in us all. We all have the good and the bad. It's like yin and yang. You know, there's the good and there's the bad. And there's happy and sad. But how can you know you're happy if you were never sad? Yeah. I, you know, yeah, I, I'm totally with that. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I'm like, you, you only, you know, you've done bad. You can feel you've done bad when you've mm -hmm. done bad. Yeah. So I often wonder, like, what's the, what's the thing behind your head telling you whether something's when you're good out or of bad? integrity? Yeah, you feel you're out of integrity. Yeah, yeah. That you're, but that's the good part in you. It's the the good aspect of you. It's not sitting well with you. You know, if something doesn't sit well with you, it's like um going out with a group of people. And you know in your heart and soul, they're just not good for you. Yeah. You just don't feel comfortable. And is, life experiences do it as well. What does, yeah. So yeah. I remember when I was a young lad, if I had drove over a rabbit when I was going yeah. to work, I fucking give a fuck. And now if I hit a rabbit, I'm devastated. Mm -hmm. I nearly crashed the car mm -hmm. trying to avoid a rabbit. Mm -hmm. And afterwards I'd be there, what the fuck was I doing? I nearly crashed my car trying to avoid a rabbit. <laughs> but I think, you know, you, you have kids and you, yeah. you, you kind of mellow out. You do, yeah. There's, there's a sentimental side to you, you know, but um, sin metals are sentimental, you know, they can be very, um, I don't know, nostalgic, I suppose, you know, and soft. Doesn't matter, because I thought we, you'd be seeing the same kind of no, I issues don't. with people. and No, everybody, like there's not two, there isn't two people the same. So every time that I turn on my camera in the daytime, I don't know what is going to be in front of me. Because you do Zoom meetings with people. Yeah, I do, yeah. I do WhatsApp mostly, right? And you don't know, there's someone, you know, they come on the thing and everybody, they're just trying to live a good life and they're just looking for a little bit of help from somewhere, you know? And I find when I tell them that they have a spiritual committee and all you have to do is ask, right? And I know from the way people come back to me and say, oh my God, Liz, this happened, right? Yeah. So basically all you do in SRT is... You check the committee, you make sure they're correct. You educate them to support that person the best possible way. Then you look at the soul, right? And you ask, is the soul supporting what this person is looking for? Are you talking to their soul? Yes, I'm looking at their soul then. I'm not doing it. I'm saying, hi self, educate yourselves on that person's soul. What percentage is the soul supporting that person? And I make it 75%. So there's 25% the soul doesn't know, isn't aware that that person is thinking that it wants that, but the soul is not supporting it. And that's telling you what percentage it yes, is. Yes, yes. This is what I'm saying to you, right? So just say, um, just say a girl gets divorced, right? And she, he finished the marriage, right? That'd be rare, wouldn't it? Well, which, whichever of them finished the marriage anyway, one of them, it's normally one person wants out, right? So the person that wants out is gone and having a life. And the person that's left behind that didn't want the marriage to end is there. I took a vow. I thought this was going to be for life. Mm. Right. Well, then what we do, if we know nothing's, they're never going to get back together. The chances are that they were married to each other for maybe 30 or 40 lives before. <sighs> and he did the dirt on her that many times. So what I do is I get the person to revoke the vow. I revoke any and all marriage vows between me and X. And I choose to stay open to daily guidance and decisions, right? That are for my best and highest good. So that, that you revoke the vows. The soul takes a vow very, very seriously. Well, I can't think of anything more hor horrifying than over and over repeating your life. But we do. And we do. And I'm telling you, I didn't, look, I was 45 years of age when I learned this. And I was there like getting answers, right? And going, oh, this couldn't be right. Right. And then I had to actually do releasing statements to believe the pendulum, to believe that they were telling me the proper information. If I was to ask that, something would answer me. 
It probably would, but I'd have to be tapped into you, like, you know, I'd have to be... No, if I picked it up? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Do you want it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Like, okay. Show me. So, what are you saying to me on this? Right, so just um, hold your arm, right? Yeah, yeah, like that. Now, lift up your arm, your hand, like that. This way. Do that. Yeah. Now, just give. do that. Yeah, that's it. Now, go up a nice bit. Now, just drop down the pendulum. Just drop the whole thing down. You see the way it's moving a little bit? Yeah. You're giving the pendulum time to move now and room to move. Okay. Right? But you see, you have to say to your spiritual committee, Hi self, when I move the pendulum like this, up and back, this is a yes. So just do that. This? Yeah, that's a yes. That's a yes? That's a yes. Okay. Right? Now let go. I just go up like that and say, give me a yes. Give me a yes. There you go. It's very, it's very light it's very light but it is doing it right okay. but you have to be focused like you know you're, tap, you're telling your spiritual committee to give you the answers to the pendulum give me a yes and you give the pendulum room to move you can't just sit there and, and have it nothing happening you've got to give it mo- room to actually move so it's been around circles well, no it's going left and right now yeah just that's a no really a no is going back and forward like that yeah going the other way Right. <laughs> yeah. But you see, you have to, um, you have to hold it in a certain way. And is that know? weird because it's yours? Oh, no. No, that's just a little tool. That's just a little piece of jewellery as far as I'm concerned. There's nothing magic about that. Nothing. It's just a little pendulum. It's my favourite pendulum. <laughs> Why is it your favourite? <laughs> it's just small and it's cute and it's easy to use, you know. So, you know, but that's part of me now, the ha- pendulum. Have you ever... Looked in someone's souls and, and said, oh my God, they're evil. Um, and said, get the fuck out of my office. Well, you see, if um, they're influenced by evil, it's not that they're evil. You know, they're influenced by a lower level of consciousness. You know, I know what I'm talking about is kind of like foreign to a lot of people, right? But it's so simple for me. The well, simpleness of it is. I said to people. Right, go on. Because <laughs> people, loads of people were asking me questions and asking me to get you on again. Okay. And I thought about doing a live, but it was just too complicated. So I asked people to send me questions. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so you can answer them as quick or as slow as you want. Okay. And hopefully we'll get to as many as possible. And a nice few came in. Okay. I hope they're all nice. <laughs> well, look, if they're not nice, just, you know, time to fuck off. Uh just want to say you're great people and it's nice to see and hear real people in the world that's gone fuck. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Thanks a million, Tommy. Uh, has she a long waiting list and what's the next price? I don't know what that means, next price. Have you a long waiting list? Um, I try not to. You see, I make a mistake by probably taking on too many, but I only do it because I want to get through as many as I can. But you see, an SRT clearing isn't just a few minutes. It takes about an hour and a half. And if a person talks a lot (laughs) and if they're giving you, you know, telling you their information and what they want cleared, it takes time. So I'm finding now that it's nearly taken me two hours to do a clearing. Because you talk to them and get to know them. Because I talk to them. Well, I do a little bit of feng shui at the beginning. Just because that's 35, that's 33 and a third percent of your life. But the decisions you make are another 33 and a third. And then your spirituality is another 33 and a third. So it's about balance. Okay. Uh, can you get a clearing to help with anxiety and depression? You can, yeah. Yeah. Because anger or anxiety is a program within the soul. And anxiety is worrying about the future. Depression is worrying about the past. So we get the soul. We clear negative memories from the soul and active memories with an emotional harm that's actually keeping them in the past. Right. And we try to project the soul into the present moment. Right. So the soul hasn't to be worrying about what happened between now and childhood, childhood and the past lives. Only now, because the soul is a spiritual being that remembers everything. So it can also remember what happened in the 1700s, but it's nothing to do with now. (laughs) Now is all that matters. (laughs) What do people usually get clearance for? Well, it can be to find a partner. It can be to... um, you know, it can be because... How does it help you find a partner? Oh, you can do many love. Stop you being an asshole. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, no can, like, like if, if someone says, I can't find a partner, would you say, I don't have to do a clear stop being an asshole? No, I would say, um, we ask spirit 
we educate the spiritual committee, right, to go looking for that partner. And we ask spirit to bring in their perfect vibrational partner. Is there a perfect vibrational partner? I do believe there is, yeah. I do believe, I do believe you have to work on every relationship, right? But I do believe that if you say, like, just say you said the spirit, just say you say now, Matt. Right. Oh, I'm looking for a beautiful. Matt's going to shame himself now. (laughs) I'm looking for someone gorgeous like, you know, but you could meet someone gorgeous. You could be a bitch. Right. So what you need is someone that vibrates on the same level as you. Yeah, that she's easy on the eye and whatever, like, you know, but it's a bit of a balance like and, you know, you vibrate on the same level. That she's not half there in another. Maybe she's using too many vibrators. (laughs) That's probably the problem. Um, Can you clear spirits? Yes. Well, I don't. Spirit does. Are all spirits bad or evil? I don't think they're, no. I think an awful lot of spirits that are around are lost souls. They're, peop- they're spirits that, they're actually just souls that left bodies w- through probably a happening, which would be, a, say, a car crash or really quickly, right? Heart attack, that the actual conscious mind didn't realize they were going. So the soul takes 90 hours to leave the body. And if it doesn't leave the body in that time, it goes into kind of like the third astral plane and it's stuck and it can't move on. So when people, I always find that, I always say to people, if um, there's a spirit in their house or whatever, I say, do you realize you're doing them people a great honor? You're sending them on. So what we do is we clear the sadness from their soul. We clear their souls of any memories and then the soul can go. And sometimes the soul can be afraid of judgment and afraid of condemnation in the spirits of light, in the realms of light, right? So, so people are getting judged? They feel they're going to be judged because of religious... Dogma. Yeah, because of old, you know, old religious beliefs and solidified patterns and all that type of thing. They think they're going to be judged. So we clear the soul and we let the soul know. I talk to the soul, basically. It's okay. The worst thing can happen is they'll be sent back. Do they talk back? I get... Messages for people, yeah, sometimes. You've got messages for people? I would get messages, yeah. They'd say, um, tell this person this. Yeah, I would get, say. Fuck off. Yes. You can ask. Tell ask, me one. Tell your, your people there will know that, you know, your followers will know. Just say um, someone dies. Just say now um, a wife dies, right? And then he wants to move on or whatever. Well, that girl could come in, that, that person could come in and say, go on, you know. I know what you're doing and I'm aware of what you're doing and I want you to be happy and all that kind of thing. Yeah, it does happen. Oh. Yeah. I won't give the name. Uh, <laughs> feel so much safer now. Had a Holy Spirit washed down mm. and no more noises at night. Yeah. Explain mm. that. Um, a Holy Spirit washdown. down. Um, a Holy Spirit washdown down is just say now you were in here and you felt something was going on, right? Well, a Holy like the heebie-jeebies. Spirit. Yeah, if you get the heebie-jeebies about something, like you said, you'll get the heebie-jeebies, right? Well, there might be an essence of an uncomfortable energy. Right? I get that in some turntables, some woods. Yeah, well, well, you never know. But what we do is we do a Holy Spirit wash down on the house. And it's literally, it just clears the house. You download light into the house and the house feels great and it's gone, whatever it was. We send it on. And then I always say to that person, You're doing that soul in honor by sending it on. I don't do it. Spirit does it. You never get involved with clearing the spirit yourself. We are not capable of it. Oh. Spirit does it. Hi, self. Please clear. Do you believe in hell? No. Why? I don't believe in hell. But you believe in judgment and... No, I believe in lower level of consciousness, right? I believe that, um, as in what? That we experience hell. No, hell. Like Satan. And I believe that there big is big horns, a, hooves on his feet. I believe that there is burning a, people um, in cauldrons. <laughs> I believe that there is. I won't say the word hell. I believe that there is dark energy, dark souls. Right, you know, that are dark people, like people that murder. They are dark souls. Then there's the higher vibration souls, right? But I just think that the dark souls are souls that haven't learned yet. They just haven't learned yet. What does an appointment with you entail? What happens during it? Well, the first thing I do is I chat <laughs> for a few minutes, right? Then I take their date of birth. Then I go into the little Bazzi chart and I say, you're a gua too, you're, you know, you're little animals, right? And I say, did you have a hard time last year? Of course, if they had the snake or the tiger or the monkey last year, they had a hard time. And then I say, right, that's gone. 
but the tiger is still around until the 5th of May or the 5th of just fuck Next stay month, indoors until right? then. Oh, literally, <laughs> literally. But um, we're out of the tiger now on the 5th of March, right? So then it's just the rabbit, right? But there'll be other months, there'll be other animals. Every animal gets a turn every month as well. But the tiger is not nice, you know? So There's I fucking do. some amount of people that must be going to you after messaging in. Oh, this, yeah. This is another one. Been coming to you for SRT for years now. I couldn't live without your guidance. Oh, Lick all yeah. <laughs> Another one. We moved in, sleeping soundly since my clearing. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much for clearing my house. I haven't had a good night's sleep in that place since we moved in. Oh yeah, that was two and one. Mm. Thanks for the clearing. So what? They moved into the house and they they thought there was some. Just an awful lot of people. Does that happen a lot? It does, yeah. But I think it's only because, just say you move into a house that some a family lived in it for 20 years. Well, the memories is in the essence of the house, right? It's like, it's just energy, stuck, stagnant energy. And if there was a lot of rows in that house, just say the, the couple wasn't, wasn't getting on well, well, the energy, like the energy of the students and everything should be in this school still, right? So when I do a Holy Spirit washdown. Can just, you feel that in weird here? Not in here. No, but out in the hall now, it's not, you know, <laughs> the Holy Family Room ain't great. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, wouldn't I wouldn't love the energy there now. No. Like what? I don't know, it's just cold or something. Oh, that's brilliant now when I'm in here on my own. Uh, yeah, but Thanks I'll, a lot, Liz. I'll do Fucking a Holy Spirit that. wash down <laughs> and uh, it'll help everybody here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not religious. Can I still get a clearing? Yes. Uh, are you moving the pendulum during your clearing? How does it move? Well, we kind of talked about that. Yeah. Uh, do you work with angels? Not really, no. Uh, I've heard you say spirit when working before. When you say that, what do you mean? Spirit is, to me, the Godhead, right? So on one of my charts there, it says, who am I working with? And normally you're meant to be working with high self, right? So my high self committee is actually pushing the pendulum, but they're getting the information from the Godhead, from the highest level of consciousness. Doesn't necessarily have to be called the Godhead. But I, before I start clearing, I say the Godhead, why is it? The Godhead is all. All is the Godhead. So I tap in, I skip the angels, I skip the saints, I skip the masters, and I skip the archangels. And I go right to the top. So you cannot go wrong if you tap into what you feel is the highest level of consciousness. It's always fucking great to go straight to the top. Go straight to the top. I fucking agree with that in any form. Well, I always do, and I always find, since I did, um, you see, you don't know what level of angel you're working with. You really don't. Uh, fuck the middlemen angels yeah, anyway. The middlemen, yeah. <laughs> uh, I messaged Liz as I would love a session, but I can't get over the fact that it's done over the phone. <laughs> oh, it can be done over the phone. I can do it clearing on anyone anywhere in the world over the phone. Over, yeah. I don't even have to be on the phone. All I need is a date of birth. That's all. I need a name, a date of birth, and a little bit of information about what's going on. And even at that, I don't have to know. Spirit will tell me what's going on. How do you cope with so many brothers? <laughs> I love them all. Ah, who do you love the most? They're no burden. <laughs> who, who, do you, who do you love the most? Who do I love the most? Yeah. Oh God, that's a very hard question. So I'm going to have to say you. <laughs> Could you talk about a recent client session, listening to you previously and saving to go to you? Oh. Uh, does Liv have any examples of how this has helped people in their lives, success stories, so to speak? I should look. What's your best success story? My best success story? So many. Of like, was anyone ever really, 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 really bad and took an awful lot of work? Um, I won't say an awful lot of work, but there was one guy, well, one lad in particular, he was on life support. And now I did a, I know everyone will be kind of going... <laughs> I put a new soul in his body. <laughs> yeah. And the soul that was in his body wanted to go. So do you remember, remember I was saying suicide, the soul can want to leave. Yeah. It wants to go, right? But someone can get a very bad illness and the soul can want to go through that illness. Right? But I can say to spirit, does the soul want to leave the body? Right? And spirit could say yes. And then I'd say, right, can we bring in another aspect of the soul? So what? We're only using not... So are you telling me that the soul that we're told is our real self 
can fuck off and someone else can come in. Do you not realise, well, we call it, we call it bringing in another soul, right? But it can be another aspect of the soul, right? So think about this. You're using not, listen now, you're using not point not not one percent of your soul. Where'd you get the maths? In your body. Robert I, Dexler downloaded this information, right? So your soul is doing other things and you know that in other dimensions, parallel universes, all that type of thing. So your soul is busy. Other aspects of your soul is busy doing other things. So we can call in another aspect of your soul to come in and support the soul now. They call it, well, I suppose we say we're bringing in a new soul, but you're bringing in another aspect of the soul. You have 65 different aspects in your life. Right? What? what do you mean? Think of yourself as a big tree. You're well rooted yeah. and you grow. Yeah. Right? Well, you have all these different um, branches. branches on the tree. Yeah. So one branch is Vicky, another branch is Lily, another yeah, branch yeah, is which whatever. Gender? And there's all these different aspects, hmm. right? So you're, you're very busy with all these different people in your life, right? So who's pulling from you or who, who's nurturing you and growing you or who's pulling you, right? Who's pulling from you, taking your energy? Oh, yeah. Right? So what you have to do is make up your mind, right? Is Matt good for me? Well, this is what you do, right? <laughs> and <laughs> this is what you do. And you make him plenty of money. <laughs> if, if Matt's good for you, well, you keep him there. But whoever else isn't good for you, you let them go, right? Or you let just push them back. Do you know what I mean? You don't use, you don't. But how the fuck is a soul, a different soul? So if a different soul, you get a different soul to come into my body. Am I not going to be a little different? Not so much. Well, it's like um, getting a, a, a heart transplant. You're getting the essence of somebody else. Does that happen? Yeah. When someone gets an organ from someone? I do believe that, yeah. Have yeah. you ever had any experience in it? Um, I don't believe I had any, no. But I do know, I, I, um, I think about that sometimes. Can you do SRT on children? Yes. Not babies. Why are you not babies? Because, <laughs> do you ever watch um, Superman? Yeah, and I have a fucking love Superman. he's downloading for the, the few years. Before he comes up and out and starts doing his thing. Hmm. Well, when a baby is born, right? You don't do a SRT on a baby when it's in the womb. You don't do SRT on the soul because you could clear the reason why it's coming in. The soul is coming in for a reason. So you have to allow the baby to be born. You have to allow the soul to download, to download all of the old information of what happened to it during its previous lives and what it's come, going to do now. Fuck. Yeah, we don't do it, but we can after about three months when our everything's downloaded. You can you can do a baby. How can I make an appointment with her? Just um, what do you call it? DM me on WhatsApp or not Facebook WhatsApp. and Instagram. You're so bad. Instagram. You're I'm, so bad. I'm, That's really so bad. <laughs> uh, please <laughs> have, ask Liz if we truly exist in another form after we die. If yes, what's the proof? Thank you. What's the proof? The proof is that I get messages from people when I'm working on people. And it's like, just think about um, a bottle of perfume. Just think of a bottle of perfume. You spray the perfume. It's gone out of the bottle. But it, the energy is in the cosmos. The soul never dies. The body dies. The soul leaves. And then the soul goes up and then it can come back if it wants or do whatever, you know. I, it's just, it's very hard for me to explain in a few minutes, you know the concept of how I see things, you know, but I think it, to me anyway, it's, it's very profound. Are you able to help people deal with grief after death? Well, you have to go through the stages of grief, right? You do have to go through each stage of grief, right? But I do think that there would be people who would have lost people maybe 10 years ago and they're still grieving, right? So grief goes straight to the lungs. Huh? The lungs. If people, grief, the, the feeling of grief goes straight into the lungs. So people grieve through the lungs, like. Did you grieve, did you find it easier grieve for dad doing what you do? Um, it doesn't make it any easier, you know, but I understand where he is. And I understand with the little messages I got that he's okay. What messages did you get? I just, I dream about him at night and I dreamt about him the other night. What was it about? Um, he walked into a room. <laughs> he walked into a room. I don't even know where we were. And another night, I didn't even tell Mammy, but I shouldn't be telling it here. But I dreamt that 
um, I was bringing daddy in to meet mammy in a hotel. And they were going to have a meal together and they were sitting up. Do you know the way you, you go up Were the young steps. or old at the time? They were a little bit younger than they are, well, than she is now. But it was like that he was meeting her, you know, and I was making it happen. You know. And when when you go to the graveyard, say, mm. and there's, you know, you go to visit dad's grave mm. where there's so many graves. Does mm. that, is there an energy there? I We don't like the graveyard. I don't. You see, there's too much yin energy in a graveyard. And if you're very sensitive, if, you, if you're sensitive to energy, right, you're going to, it's not even that you're going to be haunted. You're just going to pick up a vibe, you know. What vibe? Um, just, just say um, a soul is not gone. Right? A lot of souls don't happen to pass. It's like we went to um, um, a psychic there back a while ago. I didn't really want to go, but the girls wanted to go. I just thought to be contact daddy, right? And when was I, this? A couple of weeks ago. Few you weeks fucking ago. do loads of things and <laughs> never tell us. <laughs> I can't even think of your man's name now, right? We went to Kilkenny and I said, to, I just said to the girls, I know, I'm going here now and I know we're wasting our time because he's not going to come in. Who? Right? Daddy. I knew daddy wasn't going to come in, right? Because he's too high. He's gone, he's gone up into the Godhead level of consciousness. He's not a spirit. Right. So your man was saying, I'm I'm a medium. So I am the the bridge between the living and the dead, basically. Do you believe in mediums? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They can see spirits. So I was there, high self, put a triple and fire shield around me here. I'm here now. They, can they see see spirits? They can see spirits, yeah. So he was there saying to there were two women, two women down the back, and he was saying, Oh, I see a man with glasses standing between the two of ye. He's earthbound. Right? And then there was another girl there. What does that mean? Earthbound. The spirit was earthbound. It was a discarnate. It was a spirit. So are they rocking around everywhere? They're rocking. Well, they were rocking around that night, right? And the girls were very disappointed now at the end. Because so he, he didn't come in, right? But there was another girl there that I had done SRT and her mother. And she was waiting for her mother to come in. And she texted me the next day and she said, well, Liz, what do you think of that? And I said, well, you hardly thought your mother was going to come in. When um, she sent on. Because I had sent her on through the SRT before she, when she passed like you know so you send on the spirit you send on the soul so how many mediums have you went in your life very little and I'd say him before once before and did anyone come to you no well I'd make sure they wouldn't <laughs> but before you done all this <laughs> mm. had you loads of experience with spirits and stuff yeah yeah can you remember any scary ones when you were young oh god there was loads there's too many to even you give know, me, give me an example of one. I feel that everyone thought I was just fucking loony, like you yeah, know. Yeah, give me an example of one. At home. At home. In our home place. Mm. In the new house. No, the old house. The old house. Well, the new house I had a few little hairy moments as well, but the old house a lot. Like what? A lot. Um, remember, I told you in the last podcast that I saw the priest yeah. going up by the side of the house, up over the dung hill, and out into the graveyard. Yeah. Right. I saw him. And then I used to see, um, oh, how would I explain it at all? Like these, um, like snakes coming out of the wall um, along the side of the house. Now, I don't know if that broke. On the outside there, or the inside? On the outside, coming out of holes. So you'd be in the wall. Uh, walk in the middle of the day. Yeah. Walking no, around. At, in the evening time. All right. Anytime. I would just know. I would just feel them like, you know. What would you do? Well, they would freak me out. I remember one night, um, I gone off a fright at home. Um, I thought it was three women coming out of the wardrobe. <laughs> I swear to God, you know our old bedroom at home? In and our ho new house? Yeah, the new house. And you know the way there's a... Yeah, the, the little perforated... The little things going like that. Yeah. Well, I was lying and I lying, I could see the wardrobe. And next thing I'd see the wardrobe open and these three shadow energies coming at me like, well, I pulled the place down. I screamed so much. But I was... They told me I was crazy. But I know I wasn't. The old house now, I did um, witness a good few little things like that. Just people, you'd see the people in the room like, and I know there was a man in the room one day too, and it was another day there was an old woman and she was grunting around the place like, grunting around the place. You know, she was dressed in, um, do you know the brown tights and the little apron over her and the net in her hair and um, and she was like literally going around, <coughs> She frightened the life out of me. And then she came over to me and I started pushing her and pushing her away and pushing her away. What age were you? Oh God, I'd say 16 or 17, I'd say. 15. And was there anyone else in the house when that was happening? She was all there. 
But nobody, like, they'd know I was distressed, but they couldn't see why I was distressed. You know, so I, when I started the SRT, I had to make a contract with my spiritual committee. Do not let me see this shit anymore. Well, what age were you when you done the SRT? 45. Right. So when you were 20, like mm. when you were like when you moved out of home mm. and you moved out for the first time, where, where was the first place that you moved to? Um, I think it was Kilkenny. And had you thought you were a little bit mad yourself? Oh, I was beginning to wonder, was I, you know. And were you seeing things <laughs> then? I always saw stuff. I always felt it. Oh, and now there was one thing that really freaked me out, right? Now it really freaked me out, right? I was, um, I came back from Carlo one night coming from seeing James and I parked the car. Do you remember where my house was? There was a bank across the road yeah. from it. There was a little car park there. We used to park the car there every night. And when I went to park the car, there was a girl sitting on the curb, really white, really kind of pale, right? But a lovely looking little one. And she was crying. And I said, are you okay? And she said, I'm, I'm, um, she couldn't get a lift home or something, right? So what did I do? I offered her a lift home and she said she lived in John's Well, something like that. And I, I said to her, she look, I'll bring you on, right? Well, the minute she came into the car, I was sorry I let her into the car. Right? I was really sorry I let her into the car and I said, there's something not right here. Why? She was weird. Right? I'm really quiet. Right? So we drove anyway. I hadn't a clue where I was going. Right? And then um, we drove for a good few miles, right? I can't remember how long we drove for, right? But James will tell you now, this is not a lie, right? So I, she, we come up to this big, big... James with you? No, I told James the next day, right? But she frightened me, right? But um, I drove up to this big, huge, big gates, like Balafin College gates now, right? And I said to her, is this it? And she said, yeah. And she said, you can drop me here. And I said, um, no, shall I drive you up? No, no, drop me here, Right? So I let her out of the car and I just felt with a coldness about her. And then I went to turn and when I looked, it was all fog, fog going in through the gate. She was gone. She was disappeared. And I was there. Is this after happening to me? Is she a spirit? Was she a spirit? Right. It was just like one second she was there and next thing she was gone. And next thing there was not any fog. Like fog between the two um, piers of the gate. So that frightened me. That really gave me the heebie-jeebies now. And was she talking to you on the way back? She didn't say anything to me, you see. That was why I was a little bit, I was like, what did I do this for? It really was now not nice. I didn't like, that was one thing now that kind of. Do you reckon she was a woman in white or a white lady? Do you know them? Have you heard of them? She was pale. She was very pale. Yeah, Yeah, she was very pale. But that's the, the, the whole thing with them is that they lure people with lifts and cars and stuff. Was was the lure behind them? Yeah, well, now there was there was nobody there, like. But I know I was stupid to do what I did. But it was only when she got out of the car and I went to turn, she was gone. Like she couldn't have been gone long enough for me to not see her walking into the. She was gone, and, <laughs> and I said, "That's the spirit, definitely." I said. And did you have a lot of nightmares back then? I did. Yeah, I remember now. I was in Martina and John's house a few times, and John had literally come into me. I'd be screaming. John literally come in and sit on the bed and say, you okay, Liz, you're okay, I'm, you're all right. You're and can right. you remember the dreams? Uh, just not, not all of them, no. Some of them can be. You see, if you have um, dark energy accumulating, you're going to, you know, you're going to start feeling not well, you know. And you can pick up dark energy. Most, when I start clearing, the first thing I do is, of course, a little bit of feng shui, but then I check for openings in the aura openings, cracks in the aura, openings in the 32 bodies, cracks in the 32 bodies. So we just don't have an aura. We have an aura and your aura is out to here and it spreads all around you and above you, right? That's your aura. That's your protective energy, I suppose. But then we have another, everyone thinks we have touch our four bodies, mental, emotional, physical and spiritual. We have touched two bodies. So if you get... It's very fun, complicated then, isn't it? Yeah, but if you get upset, it goes right through the bodies. Right. And then it goes into the lungs. It goes into the different um, areas of the body. And if you wake at certain times at night, I can guarantee you those feelings are gone into the cells of the organs. Do you find churches and stuff soothing or? It depends on the church. Why right? can some churches be? The old churches now, I, I just feel the, the history, I suppose, the essence of the history. That's why you do a Holy Spirit washdown. You clear the essence and the memories 
from the bones of the place and then it becomes yours. You kind of balance you to this, to this place here. It's no longer belonging to the convent. It's yours. So that it won't remember the convent, if you know what I mean. Everything's energy. So the only way I'd be always leering you and <laughs> I'd be calling you a witch. Yeah. <laughs> would you be, would you be a witch? I probably was in the past life. So do you think you're a witch in the past life? I'd, I'd, I was everything and anything in a past life. <laughs> I, I believe we were, remember you were saying about the Ethiopians. Like the Ethiopians come in to experience being an Ethiopian, be, having that terrible hard life. But then they go and the soul goes, but then they can come back in and be a king or a queen. The soul goes through different experiences. But you see. Good and bad. When you think of time, say when we think of time. Mm. So you go back in time, you go mm. forward and you're present. But we only see reality, about, there's only 3% of reality in the spectrum we see. Mm. Like there really is no past, present or future. Like so time, I, time is just yeah. a thing we experience. Yeah. It's a dimension. Yeah. Spirit doesn't see time. There's no time in spirit. So if, right, so just say they prove string theory. Okay. And there's just loads of different dimensions. So there's loads of different dimensions. Mm. But does it not mean then that all the stuff that you're talking about is aliens? There's, there's other dimensions, right? Like, do you remember I was saying about a portal in a house? Yeah. Do you remember Linda was telling you mm. on the last podcast, there was a portal in Linda's house. And when there's a portal opened. Explain that for, for anyone that. Okay. Right. It can be oh. like, a, um, I suppose, a, an opening, right? It's like an opening in the, in the cosmos, we'll say. And it can be in a particular room or in a certain place. And it just happened to be in my sister's and house. And it happened to be in Linda's house. Lo now, and behold. And I didn't want anything to do with that. I was scared of doing that. Why were you scared? Because I knew it was not. From a phone call? Um, she, she was having a terrible time. Like what? Like everything. Oh, God. Um, the, she woke up. She felt, first of all, she thought that there was um, kittens or something underneath her bed. <laughs> no, but it was a horrible, horrible, like tiny kittens only after being born, right? All squirrely and scubbly and really horrible, like, you know. And then when she woke up, right, the alarm went off. Now, the alarm was going off and going off and going off, but it went off. And Patty jumped out of bed and ran down the hall, right, to go get the alarm off. But Linda said when Patty went down the hall, next thing there was a fog in the hall. Now, where would that come out of? It was a fog, right? So this scared Linda. Right? That pretty Actually, fucking no, scare me into the fog of my house now, I'll be but, honest. Yeah, now she knew there was something, right? So she, I think she, I don't know if she contacted me now the next morning, but she didn't sleep again that night anyway. Mm. But when I went in, when I went into the charts then to do the Holy Spirit washdown, right? Um, it told me there was a portal, right? So you ask how many, um, you ask, um, there's, there's portals, energy drains, there's all different types of things you ask, right? But it said portal. No, it said entities, right? So there was, I think, two entities in the house. An entity is not a spirit. An entity is, it's li literally an alien. That's for want of a better word. It comes in from another dimension, but they're, they don't have feelings like a soul Fifth would. dimension. Yeah, they come in from another dimension. Yeah. So they don't have the feelings like a human soul would. Right? <laughs> they're just, they're, they're kind of like um, psychopaths. <laughs> for want of a better word, they won't be loving or caring or anything like that. They're not nice. To just not nice energy. So when you have a portal in a house, you have a different, a certain technique. You have to, you have to do cert, follow a certain protocol on the SRT to close the portal. To clear them, clear the entities first, close the portal and seal the portal. And I've, I've done it. I've done it a few times. And it's serious shit. <laughs> it is serious shit. Ghostbuster shit. It's Ghostbuster shit. Without the ectoplasm. Yeah, and no, it really thing. is. And, you know, like, like even now the girl I was talking to today, I said, never, ever tell a spirit to go yourself. Never. What do you mean? Never tell a spirit to go. I remember back years ago, it was two girls and they, they went somewhere to clear um, a house or to clear some place. Right. And two of them. They fancied themselves as little exorcists. Well, they did. Yeah, literally. Right. But you don't do that. So Robert Dexler, I know, I met Robert Dexler, the man that did the SRT, right? That thought, that I suppose downloaded it, created it, right? Is he a I wizard? Think, no, he was a lovely man. Absolutely. But lovely. Would he be a wizard? Well, in, I suppose in his own way, yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, no, you don't. You never, ever 
tell them to go yourself. We don't have the power or the authority to do it. All you do is say, hi self, please clear. Send that soul on to its right and perfect place. And then you don't have to do anything. So I always tell people, I'm doing this clearing now. I'm taking my head out of it. Right. This is nothing to do with me. And then I go, I, I just literally turn my head and say, look, I'm just asking the pendulum now. I'm asking spirit what needs to be done for you. And it'll show me. So I don't get involved. And that's how I think it's so powerful because I'm not doing it. And what I do then is I educate that person's committee and I tell that person, I'm telling you, your committee is just as powerful as mine. You can do this yourself. And when someone rings me and says, oh, my God, this is have to happen. And I said, you did it. I didn't. Get your book out and do clear. Do one on me. <laughs> do, I, want to, I want to see what, what it does. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not shy. Right. And see, does it uh, do something profound? Okay, I don't know if I can. I should look. She has, if someone's not watching on YouTube, she's after pulling out a fucking folder. <laughs> and I'm not joking. I hope I can put my glasses How many on pages now? are on that folder? Do I look really weird in the glasses? Hey, that's some <laughs> folder. How many oh, have you got? Look, look. There's a hundred page, well, there's a hundred page folder. And there's loads of stuff. But that's not just SRT. That's other courses I've done. That's biogeometry. So if I, so can someone say to you, go on, find out what's wrong with me. Yeah. Okay. Right. Now, I was actually looking at you today. Right. I was looking at you today. I was thinking that when you sent me that fucking weird message. I wrote it down here. What'd you write? David is a gua too. He's born the year of the monkey, the month of the goat. (laughs) And you're in a pig time from 37 well, to 47. Well, by God, that's true. And you're yin metal and you're the Grand Duke. <laughs> right, we've got all that. We've established that. <laughs> right. Yin okay. metal, Grand Duke. Right, so will I show you what I do? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So what I do, right, is I say the Godhead is all. All is the Godhead. And it's very important that you tap into the highest level of consciousness. You are or I am? Me and you. I'm all tapping right. you into it now. So what are you telling me to do then when you're doing this? You have nothing to do. I just say here. Yeah. You just sit there. I can, I can do that. Yeah. Right. And then I say, okay, now the Godhead and I are one, right? It is the only presence, power and consciousness and nothing can interfere with that now or ever. Amen. It's very religious. I ask for and I accept spirit's help now. So I'm asking. Am I, is, is this an interaction me and you're having or you're yeah, having? I'm having an interaction with you now, right? And this is the man that created SRT. And this is the man that taught me SRT. I have the two of them here. One is Robert Dexler. Let me get a look at that man. Yeah. And the other lad is Peter Davis. Oh, he's absolutely a wizard. <laughs> he looks like a wizard. He just doesn't have as long a hair or beard. That's a Gandalf looking motherfucker. <laughs> he was lovely. Is absolutely he? Absolutely lovely man, yeah. He was lovely. I loved him and I loved um, Peter Davis. He was just a lovely man. He was so good to me when I... Um, Started this, right? So now, then I say, my loving intention for this healing and clearing is spiritual transformation and healing for the best and highest good of David, my brother, his high self and his spiritual committee. Do I get extra clearing because I'm your brother? (laughs) And then I say, high self, um, prep me to work. So I'm getting him to prep me to work. You're swinging that job. Yeah, now put a triple and fire shield around us here, high self. Now, do you hear me talking to high self? Yeah. Right? Now I say, can I, may I, should I work on David? Yes. Now, your soul and committee is giving me permission, not just your conscious mind. I'm just right? stand, sitting there. Yeah. And then I say, hi, self, how long to prep David to work? It's two to prep you to work. How many blocks and interferences? Three. How many negative motivations? Four. All right. So then, <laughs> right, I go to the blocks and interferences chart. Right, which is chart five, right? And I say, what needs to be done for David? Escapism. 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 So you could be trying to escape something, right? Um, You know. um, So how did that show you escapism there? Because it showed me there. There's escapism. There's where you put the pendulum. And it just took me up there to escapism. Right? So, yeah. Escapism. Now, conscious control is coming up. What does that mean? Right? That is allowing your conscious mind take precedence over your inner guidance. So you have to go with your gut more than my head. Your, yeah, than your head. That seems as if it got me in an awful lot of trouble right? in my life. Now, appeasement is coming up, and that's people pleasing. You have to please yourself. Right? That's so there might be things happening in your life that you feel you're doing it for other people. 
but you need to please yourself. Right now, power is coming up. Taking back your power, stepping into your power. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, anything else here? Right. Anything here? So it's Ego. all good, like. Oh yeah. Ego. There's nothing bad about SRT. No, I was just like, there was no demons or. No, there's no spirits around you. There wouldn't be. I watch you anyway. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I'd Would you ever get a vibe? Head. Um, an odd time. <laughs> an odd time. I do would. you worry about me? Um, I just know that um. There's things you could do that would be help, more helpful to you like, if you listen to me. <laughs> like what? <laughs> like getting into your good direction and making sure that your head's not in the wrong, any of those wrong directions. Right. I've done that now for certain people and the difference it makes to them is just unbelievable. All right. So I'm just going to have a look here and I'm not going to get, what I'm going to do now is check your aura. Oh, right. So how many openings in David's aura? <laughs> 45. I was going to say, what? 45 openings. 45 fucking, how many is there supposed to be? None. Ah, Lizzie, don't there's, be telling me that. There's 45 openings in your aura. How many cracks are in his aura? 100 and 50. Ah, lay down. You have openings and cracks in your aura, right? So yeah, I was having a good day. To close them, but sure, you're going to have a better day now. <laughs> so what's right? the cracks from? It's just, it can be from anything, David. Jesus you Christ. Know? So how many openings in the 32 bodies? 100. 200 245 <laughs> Is that a lot? It's a good few How many cracks in the trust of your bodies? One 185 So close all openings Now I'm telling my spiritual committee to close all openings and seal and close all cracks and fill with the golden light of spirit Right? Now I'm checking um, Okay, the trust of your bodies How many openings in the trust of your bodies? How many cracks? So I'm going to close openings and cracks in the trust of your bodies, right? And then we ask about your Weechee how many openings in his wee chi? My wee 45. Chi. How many cracks? 105, I think. I'm okay. in fucking tatters. Close. And seal and strengthen. Now, your aura should be vibrating at 2,100 cycles per second to, to be really efficient and keep you safe, right? So what's yours? 1,500. It should be 2,000. One, 2,100. So we raise that, right? So this is what we do. See the way it's doing it, right? Now we ask, how many openings in the aura? None. How many cracks in the aura? None, right? How many openings in the thirty-two bodies? None. How many cracks? Now I'm just going to ask, right? What am I to do here? Okay. Feeling unlucky. Unlucky. <laughs> there might be a, 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 um, an aspect of you thinking, oh, why is this happening? I feel unlucky. Yeah. Yeah, Feeling. but fucking yeah. Of course yeah, I am. Feeling unlucky. That's what's coming up, right? So we're going to clear that feeling from your oh, soul of feeling going. unlucky, right? Injustice is coming up. Feeling injustice was done for you. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Does it? Yeah. Um, stinginess is coming up. So someone been stingy with their time or been stingy with money or not um not cooperating, Greenway. basically. Huh? Greenway. <laughs> that's coming up, <laughs> right? Anything else? Self-limitation. So it's like, because of that, you feel limited, but you're not, right? So what we do then, right, is, now they're just some of the little things that they're, they're looking at, right? And he blocks to positive expression. Right, okay. Blocks to involvement. So there must be some, someone or some, someone you need to get involved with, right? In order for things to move on, maybe, right? Reverence to be respected as well. Maybe you feel you're not being respected. Yeah, I need fucking people. more respect. All right. Not getting enough fucking respect. Blocks no one respects my authority. Blocks to, to thoughtfulness as well. Clear. Now, I'm going to check your committee. Right? Go for it. And then I say, how many souls are on David's spiritual committee? Two. How many guardian angels? One. Your committee is correct. So that's good news. Yeah. Now, what percentage are your committee supporting you? Oh, there's In every the aspect of your life. Now, I'm not just talking about... Um, one or two things, yeah. everything. So what percentage is your committee supporting the positive plans and concepts in your life? 80%. So you have a lot of great things going on in your life. Can you bum that up to 100? We can, things? yeah. Can't do it. We can bum that up to 100 now, right? Bum that up to 100. But you have to, you have to, in your heart, say, what do you want? Right? So you want, what do you want? Who do you want to come on board to help you? Right? So you have to say, hi, Sal, get up there, find out what I need. I have to right? say that. Mm, yeah. Right. So what we do is we paint a picture here now and we send your committee to the Godhead and we have them educated. Now, it sounds like it's really kind of, you know, but we can do this. 
right? So in your heart now, ask for what you want. you're so confident. Yeah. Staring at me, eyes, saying, we can do this. Ask for what you want. Yeah, I am. Right? I am. I know. I know this works. Right? So what you say is, I say, what does this, what does my brother need for his best and highest good, his best and highest happiness, abundance? What does he need? Get up there, high self, and find out. Right? So we update your committee with all the information, wisdom, truth, light, and understanding that's available at the Godhead now. Right? So we're educating your committee, right? And then we ask him to research the SRT and find the simplest, most compact, most powerful, most beneficial process for you, right? And we look again, right? What percentage are they supporting you? About 170% now. 170? They're supporting you big time. You, hey, I can't argue with them kind of numbers. I'm telling you now, right? That's what we do, right? So we've educated your committee. Right now. They're we, fucking quick learners. Yes, they are. And that's why I'm saying it's done so quickly. Right. And if I say to high selves, please clear that spirit. It's gone like that. Th like that. They're doing it. I'm not. Right. They're just showing me what they're doing for you. Right. And can you find out who my guardian angel is? Your guardian angel is not anybody you know. Your soul family is your, is a relation. Right. But your guardian so angel. So it's not like one of the ways. No, your guardian angel is a, is an angel. Fuck, I was hoping it was Michael. That is sent to look after you. Oh, right? it's going to be Michael the Archangel. But your spirit, well, yeah, you can assign Michael Archangel, you see. You can ask him to help you. No way. Yes. Hi, self. Assign Michael Archangel now. And that's why it's so We're calling in the big boys there. Yeah, that's what I do. We're working with the big guns. Right? These are the big guns. We're going right to the top. Right? And then when you go to the top, you can assign whatever masters or whatever you're looking for. But God is at the head of it all. And that's why I can very comfortably clear spirits, do everything like that, because I'm not doing it. They what, are. What do you think God looks like? I'd love to think that he's a fine looking man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What why God would you have like. sexual aid for <laughs> God? No, I just think that God is just, it's a, a fabulous energy. When do you feel most close to God? I think when I'm doing my SRT. Yeah, and when I go to bed at night, I, every time I go to bed at night, I thank them for what I do because I really do think that everyone should know how to do this and everyone should have this done. Is it expensive? It's, um, well, it's not expensive, but it's better than, I'll tell you now, I've had people come to me that have been to so many different doctors, um, you know, going to consultants, things like that, and you do the clearing and there's a huge difference. Because the soul was supporting the illness. Right? So you, you delete, literally. It's like putting on Sky Television and you have all these programs ready to go. They're recorded. Well, you play the program. Your soul is just playing a program of divorce, of illness, of whatever. Fuck, are we in a simulation? I don't know. Well, I, look, this is the way I, this is this, um, what would you say, this modality of healing. Right. And this is how we do it. Right. But I have my own spiel on it. Right? And I do other things along with SRT. You know, I, I combine everything together. You know, I'd be looking at um, just say someone has a problem with their kidney. I'd say, what percentage of Shen disturbance, spiritual disturbance in the kidneys? So I can ask about that for you. Right. Yeah. What percentage of Shen disturbance in your kidneys? 55 percent. So we clear the Shen disturbance from the kidneys. Right? So the, kidneys are a bit, <laughs> the kidneys are a bit knocked about. Right? Well, you might be sure. But it's the water element in your body. The kidneys is the water element. Right? How many programs to be clear for the kidneys? Two. How many spirit level programs? Seven. So a program is like a weed. You clear the program. A spirit level program is the root. We're getting into the root. And we're clearing the root of it all. And say, past life stuff that the soul is remembering there was problems with the kidneys before or in another body, like, you know. So we go really into everything, right? And then we go to the homotoxicology chart. Remember I was telling you about that before? Mm. Well, you find out where that person is early in one, two, three, four, five or six, and we ask for it to bring them down off it. Right? One is, is health and well-being. Like, I had a girl one day now, and she was actually with me, but she asked me to have a look at her sister. Right. And her sister wasn't well. She was just very tired. And the very minute I went in, took me straight to the heart. And I said to her, you make it hard to go to the doctor. I said, she's a problem, a big problem with her heart. And if she hadn't gone to the doctor the next day, she would have died. 
So something like that, it'll highlight something to me that's really serious, like that has to be looked at, you know? So normally I would just have, I do work for a lady down in Limerick, right? And all I get is a date of birth, literally a name and a date of birth. I might be told that they're in hospital or something's going on, but I literally go into the va- Bazzi chart, okay, is this person strong enough? You know, they're guo, they're say yang metal or they're, you know, I know by their personality profile if they can handle this or not, the illness. And then we ask spirit to do clearing. Right? We strengthen their aura, we strengthen their wee chi. Do you know what I mean? You're making them stronger mm. and able and kind of changing the attitude of the soul more than anything. It's all about the soul. Right? So what I do is I work on the soul and I work on the committee and I get the soul to be more positive. I clear the, as- I say, clear all aspects of soul energy and have the aspect of the soul that doesn't understand that this is a problem. Educated. <laughs> so we educate the soul and we educate the committee to support positive plans and concepts in someone's life. And that's basically why SRT is. And then they'll show me what needs to be cleared. What's the soul procrastinating about or what's the soul worrying about from past lives? Sure, it has, doesn't matter. It's nothing to do with the person the soul is in now. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So you're clearing memories from the soul and all that kind of thing, right? Is so, it still, are you still doing it? No, I'm just, um, I was talking like. <laughs> you're still right? so you're swinging the yoke. Yeah, there. I'm asking what I'm what getting nervous now. I'm thinking you're going to find other what things wrong with me. What do want me to do, right? I'm asking what they want me to do, right? Um, activate the re-encoding valve, right? The regenerative gland, the nerves and the cells. Don't recode me too much. I shit going on. <laughs> I, <laughs> the liver. I, I don't don't fucking knock me off my path. I'm no. fucking luck going on. Like yeah, the liver needs you need. Um, we need to regenerate new cells in the liver. The 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 liver regenerates new cells in the whole body. It is the regenerative. There's a um, a valve called the reencoding valve, and there's the regenerative gland, right? So we say high self activate the reencoding valve, the regenerative gland the nerves and the cells, and that reactivates everything, gets the body working better, right? So the liver and the kidneys, think about the the kidneys um, make energy and the lungs distribute the energy around the body. So everything has to be kind of in line. So what we do is we do the clearing, right? And then we try to clear shen disturbance or whatever from each organ and try to balance the elements in your body as well. Because we're made of the five elements. The world is made of the five elements. Right? So it's just, it's a, a balance of everything. Well. Do you get it? No, I'm more confused now than I ever was. Ah, uh, you're not. I uh, know, I am kind of. But I kind of get it. I'm going to ask Baird now. I'm going to just, um, hi self. Um, clear all the charts here now for David, including the nine stacks. I love that guy over there, anyway. Mop up everything. Clear all miscellaneous programs. Clear all programs at infinite levels, depths and layers, right back to the heart of spirit. Clear everything now to the many additional levels of consciousness at the Godhead. And then we say, clear all layers, irrespectively of quantity. Clear to infinity. Raise to the infinity power. And beyond. Raise again to the infinity power and continue to raise again until clear. Clear the macrocosms, the microcosms for self, spirit and clear source. They're sending me to chart 10A. Right, so chart 10A. The These one lads are breaking my balls, Liz. Yeah, they're sending me. Well, you must need it, or they wouldn't be telling me, right? So I have to go to chart 10A, right? And 10A is inhibitors, right? Who's inhibiting you? Who's trying to stop you and block you? Who's trying to stop me? Mm. God, where do I yeah. fucking stand? There you go. <laughs> we have to ask Spirit to clear inhibitors. Who is trying to block you and stop you, right? And find an alternative if they're not going to. So you've asked Spirit for what you want. Well, I've asked Spirit for what you need. <laughs> I ask, what does this guy need for his best and highest good? Right? So there's inhibitors in your life. There's people trying to block you and stop you. But that's the nature of social media, sure. Yeah, well, it's there, right? It's going on there, right? So we're asking Spirit to clear it. Right? Did you see how much money I made out of YouTube? No, I saw that. See that? Oh, yeah. Divine union with time. So don't be worrying about time. You have loads of time. None of ours in the day, this. It says here, um, memories, clear memories of sacrifices you made around time and forgive it. What does that mean? You know the way sometimes you think you wasted your time doing different things? Oh, yeah. Right? Forgive yourself for that. You didn't waste time. Everything you've done is a learning. 
everything that you do is a learning, right? So this is what they're telling me here, right? So toxic people. Hmm. Okay. So maybe the people that you're trying to get in with aren't the right ones, <laughs> right? Maybe you need to rethink. I go on fucking start yeah. writing stuff down. You're going to get me fucking fired when you relax. <laughs> <laughs> I start staring so, at my... <laughs> World energies, positive and negative. So there's always going to be positive shit going on or positive stuff and negative shit going on in the world. It's about balancing it up. Right? You know, taking the good with the bad, dissipation of vital energies. Right? And that can be someone bursting your balloon, letting you down. Right? But you know how sometimes it's meant to happen. There's better coming. Right? So this is what they're telling me here. Right? Look, I'm not enough fucking whatever. Yeah. So we're clearing the cellular memory here. Right? Okay. Anything else here? No. So. Oh, I fuck. Mean, Jesus Christ. No, I just see now. Cracks, now. holes. So. Aura not working right. Now. We have to give your soul. Toxic people. We have to inhibitors, give your. <laughs> blockages. A spiritual kick you need. <laughs> right? So we're giving him a spiritual kick now. All right? <laughs> Did you feel that? Learning is fun. You think they're doing anything? I'm learning anything. I'm learning something every day. No, but anything specific. No. No, something coming in. Oh. Download that now. Keep my eyes open. Do a final blessing. There's something you have to learn, right? Final blessing. It's might, it mightn't be a course or anything like that, but it might be something you have to learn to do, right? Not be fat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's okay to break a contract too. Is it? Mm. It says you're, it's okay to break a contract. Right now, you need seven hours of restful sleep every night. Well, that's I can tell you now. Well, that, that won't it. happen. Yeah, but you need it, right? So they're telling me here, what's it going to take for David to have at least seven hours of restful sleep at night? They're telling you your body needs it. Well, that definitely is true because I'm fucking really yeah. lacking in sleep. Yeah, well, your body needs it. It's telling me here, right? Well, is there anything you could do to get Jane to fucking stay in bed? And there'll be ramifications <laughs> if you don't. Hey, what do you do when a child won't go to bed? Well, I wonder if she in a good direction. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I want you to get the compass now tomorrow and see. Well, I'll I can find tell out you what she that chap, is. <laughs> that chap does whatever the fuck ah, she she's wants. She's a little doll. She's gorgeous. She's spirited like, you know, she's really kind of. But she look at you. She couldn't be anything else. I said to her last night, I'm going to the pub. No, daddy, you'll die. You have to stay with your family. We're your family. Yeah, no, it's saying here there's ramifications for not sleeping. Yeah, well, it is mad because I've been trying so hard to get more sleep. You need to, Dave. I, I, there was a couple of days last week I only got three hours a night. Yeah, but you see, your body's not going to be able to sustain that. No, I know that. Yeah, but like you have to do something about it. Sure, I'll go to work for but John Greg tomorrow and I'll go to the back of the wood and like, yeah, <laughs> sleep in the machine. But consciously, you have to kind of have a think about it and see. Ask Spirit what's going to take to give you that little bit of time to sleep at night. We, we were just saying, me and Vicky, because the kids are going mad and we're all over the house and we were just so busy. And next thing we said, you know what's going to really make this all so much better? When the new baby comes, <laughs> like it's going to be so much easier. There's going to be so much more sleep, God. There's going to be so much more time, less pressure. Because if you want to make life less complicated, add a baby, add a human. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I, I think you will. You'll find a way. I don't know. You have to find a way. You have to find a way. Mm. Because if you don't, there will be consequences. Your body won't be able for it. Like, could you imagine now if you weren't sleeping at night? Like, you would be absolutely wrecked. I think everyone goes through little phases where there's just a lot going on. You have to just go through it. You can't just make sleep. Well, they're saying here, download seven hours of restful sleep. So they're downloading it, right? They're actually downloading it, right? So they're highlighting to me here that sleep is very important for you. Okay. Right? And I think you know that too. I do. Yeah. So it's not rocket science like, but. No, I'll try my best to get more sleep. Look, it'd be the simplest thing now that you're telling me to do. If we can fill all them holes and cracks. They're done. I'll give it. Oh, Look, they're done. How many openings? None. How many cracks? None. How many openings in the 32 bodies? None. How many cracks in the 32 bodies? None. How many black holes in the 32 bodies? <laughs> How many portals and functions? None. How many discarnates? None. How many entities? None. How many entities? None. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but you see the way they answer me really quickly. Yeah. Right? Like, it's not coming from nowhere. 
right? And they're showing me what to do. And if I say, just say, I said, right, I'm going to go with the chart 25 now for David. No, nothing there. Because I decided I was going to go with the chart 25. Right? So I don't make the decisions. They do. They tell me where to go. Well, on that note, right? <laughs> on that note, right? Are you an ex now? <laughs> 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 we can't have a fucking 10 hour podcast because if you think I have problems, that fucking guy, if we start opening up that fucking Pandora's box. But um, Elizabeth, I, I could have a million questions of people tomorrow. I didn't get the half of them there because I can only do so many. Like, what are we at now? An hour and 35. An hour oh and 35. goodness, didn't that fly? Yeah, it goes quick. Now I have to close off on you. Oh, just close off. Right? Fuck, we don't leave that shit up. So um, we just asked some spirit now, high self-committee members and all spiritual beings, we send our love and our gratitude for the work that's been done on you this evening. Amen. We ask that your soul's connection to spirit will stay clear and open and it will continue to learn and grow in spiritual wisdom and understanding through all levels of your being. Amen. With loving gratitude, I thank and I'm releasing you now from this SRT clearing. Lessons of God on you. Bring back to harmony, balance, wholeness, oneness, love and gratitude. Oh, that's lovely. And we close the records and that's it. That's it. Mm. So now, now. There's so many things you could go into, like past lives and, you know, shit that happened to you. They would specifically show See, you. See, like, I don't know about them. But David happens. Like, it's something you just have to open yourself up to. Like, I'm your sister. You know, I'm not bullshitting. No, I know, but everyone, it's like... <laughs> but do you know it, what I mean? It's like, yeah. I just don't, I just, I would be terrified to think that I don't have control of my destiny. But you have, you have. We're yeah, all, but if you're saying that everyone's predetermined. Yes, your soul, your soul is predetermined, but you have a conscious mind. So you're looking for something, right? You're looking for... So when we go to Mass and we're trying to save our souls, basically. All right. Is that not us? You're not trying to save your soul. Your soul was never... Um, In question. It was never unsaved. Your soul is it's a, it's a spiritual being. It belongs to the Godhead. Well, it's, I've heard some shit about eternal damnation. And no. it's my soul that is in question. No. That's all bullshit. Right? We're all at different levels of consciousness. I'm ringing fat of brain. We're all at different levels of consciousness. I'm ringing fat of brain now. <laughs> and you are in fucking trouble. Brain! <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm telling you. Like... I don't think there's such a thing as a bad soul. I think it's a soul that just doesn't learn, hasn't learned yet. They're in a bad place because they just haven't learned yet. But when they come back, their soul will be gone up another little bit, of a little bit higher level of consciousness. And it takes many lifetimes. Like how many lifetimes did it take me to get doing this now? I was prosecuted for doing it in past lives. How do you know? I know, because I know by the charts. I was told. You were and told you were burnt at stake. I was burnt at stake. See, you witch. They t said I was a witch. How many they, times were you burnt at the stake? They perceived me as a witch because I did spiritual work. Why didn't you tell me this at the start? Yeah, yeah. And that's why my soul dragged its heels until I was nearly 30-something to start doing the spiritual work until I was, um, I had the clearing done and my soul was told, it's okay. She's not going to be murdered in this lifetime. Her, her body is going to be okay. You can work away. <laughs> you can do the spiritual stuff. You're not in trouble. But the soul thought it was going to be in trouble. I think I was porn star in the other day. Well, I'd say you definitely were. Because <laughs> I, I, I've got some moves and I don't know where I got them. <laughs> I, I have some moves. Remember you're the rabbit this year. There you go. <laughs> You'll be full of energy. <laughs> because, you know, I, I, yeah, that makes sense. Because oh, yeah. most lads are lifting the back legs so the camera can get a good view of the balls. Oh, Even though <laughs> there must be in a past life we were all porn stars. Not sure, you never know. I think we're a bit of everything in a past life. The imaginary cameras. They're always <laughs> there when the lads are at. <laughs> you get to a certain stage. <laughs> oh, Lord. Right, well, uh, Elizabeth, thanks a million for coming on again. Well, you're welcome. And if anyone wants to contact you, I will put up a um, link to your okay. Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. And, and Dave, thank you, because you really changed my life. Really? Oh, yeah. Because when Bammy came home with the baby and I was so... Such a bubbly little boy, <laughs> bouncing baby boy, and know. these beautiful eyes. <laughs> and it was before I had all the book tea and all the issues. <laughs> I was really perfect. I loved your warts and all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth taught me how to drive. She, you were teaching me how to drive in that little Corolla, I remember. Oh, God. Uh, That's the car I took your one to in skipping, John's well. <laughs> Elizabeth used to skip me out of school and bring me up to Dublin and bought me clothes. And I'll never forgive you for buying me them ex-work jeans. 
baggy <laughs> jeans. They were the fashion at the time. Yeah, but you were very fashionable. I was a fucking idiot. You were not. I was a dover. Your hair was gorgeous. Remember you used to have it all. I, there's pictures. It uh, wasn't gorgeous. I think your hair was lovely back like then. looked like fucking idiot. I thought you looked lovely that, back then. You think, you loved me. I think you looked absolutely lovely. Do you think I look lovely now? <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah, rest my case. A fine looking fella. Right? I have a fucking <laughs> extra two stone on me than I did before Christmas. David, you do not have extra weight on you. You're fine. I do. I have two stone. Look. I think you look very look. well. Look. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed. It's there, everyone. Look. <laughs> you know, this Fair. is what it is. What's the saying? Better have it than want it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You, you can be going so well and next thing just uh, life gets busy. That's why I do be... I'd be I'd be watching some people on Instagram and I just go, God, you're 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 not living in the real world at all. Mm. Most people aren't living in the real world. I now. know. Yeah. I'm not even living in it myself. I I, I I live half my life in a world that's not real. <laughs> and I think it's sucking the life out of me. Yeah, but I think that um you know, I think you have a lovely um family and you're a great dad and that really kind of shows. I do. I'll and and if I didn't have all that and I didn't mm. have the family I have and get to a certain stage in my life before I started all this. This, yeah. It, 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 like social media would suck. You see what happens. Like, it, it's mind-blowing. Mm. Everything's so not real. It's yeah. so crazy. Mm. Yeah. And if you just try and just be any way just normal, it's just held again. It's, it's mental. But I think that'll um, change this year for you. Well, you'll right. take control you of this year and you'll do your own thing and you'll get on. You're fine. You have so many you're people so that think you are amazing. Oh, let's stop now. But they no, do. No, you're fucking, I see I'm blushing now. I see Keep going. Keep people. going. Keep I talking. See Everybody that, um, most of the people that I have now, apart from the people I normally have, they heard the podcast. They listen to it twice. They love David. And I don't mean it in a bad way. They have a certain respect for you, right? For being real. For just being you. They love just seeing what you do every day with your kids. It's not just about, you know, the, the lights and all this kind of thing. It's not about this. It's about who you are and how you live. I'm like a forestry just Jesus. Just the normal everyday things. Yeah. I think and of myself the as a forestry Jesus. Well. Huh? <laughs> I think of myself as some kind of forestry Jesus. I'm not saying I'm the second Messiah. I'm not saying that. You I could, could be the first one for the Jews. Because <laughs> they're still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, thanks a million for coming on. Oh, you're welcome, Dave. And I'll pop the links for everyone. And uh, I will see you all next week. Thanks for listening. <laughs>